So hello and welcome to the 2017 Transvolcania Ultra Vlog. What's really good about these running holidays is that we can combine them to kind of make them family holidays as well. Have you, so you've tried it a few times now, have you, a couple of times? Money. Yeah. Um, you were going out yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, a few times, about three, three times. Like it? Yeah. Well, I tell you what I do, one thing I do. Hello, by the way, we're going on holiday. Gate 49, we've arrived, we're all here. Everybody's here. Richard and Tanya are here. The wife is here. The wife. Look, <laughs> even Liam and Zoe are here. No surprise if Stephen got here. And I got here. <laughs> So we booked a week's holiday with Thompson. The flight from Gatwick to La Palma is around about four hours. There is also a flight from Manchester if that's easier for you. And when you land in La Palma, it's probably advisable to hire a car because that makes transport around the island so much easier than relying on buses or coaches or whatever. It's just after eight o'clock in the evening and we've uh, arrived in La Palma on the London flight. Don't know if the Manchester flight's in. Looks like the Manchester flight's also in. Are you excited? No. No, we're not excited. Rubbish. And in two days' time, we will be on the top of those mountains up there, look. See? All the way up there. Arrived at the expo. Now we need to find soft flasks, because I've forgotten my... Ah, oh, yes! <laughs> First thing we see. Second year in a row at the uh, Transvolcania Expo. So we're going to get our numbers. Collecting your race number is relatively easy. Uh, you attend the expo at Los Llanos. There are a number of races. You need to make sure that you choose the right one. Take your passport with you, hand it over, and you will be given your number. Number collection for the second year in a row. This time we're going to smash it, though. Check it over there. Guys, this. Well, Dave, thank you. So uh, once you have your number, you can just check that it works by taking it and putting the chip tag just here, going like that. And then my name pops up at the top there, Stephen Cousins, Worthing Harriers. Number up there is counting down to the start of the race tomorrow. We're just going to get some lunch and then we're going to go up to El Pilar for the children's race. This is where the half marathon will finish tomorrow. The half marathon starts down at uh, Fuencaliente same place as the Ultra and it travels all the way up and finishes here at El Pilar. Um, the marathon starts here and finishes in Tazacorte and the kids race starts here in about an hour. 
El Pilar is about 1,400 metres high in the forests, about half an hour drive up windy roads from Los Llanos. This is where the children's race happens. It's split into categories, so you've got children under five or children under ten, whatever. Um, and uh, our children took part and they did last year. It's completely free and it's great fun for all the kids. Although there are so many kids taking part, it can be quite dangerous. I have seen a few bloody noses and cut knees. You'll never see him. I haven't seen Ellis yet. Anyone seen Ellis yet? There he is, go on Ellis! Go on Ellis! He's fat, he needs to be fat. So it's two o'clock, no, it's three o'clock in the morning, 3 a.m. in La Palma. I'm outside my hotel room, I've got my gear on, I'm going to have my breakfast. Then we're going to get on a coach at four o'clock, which will take us the ten minute journey down the road to Fuente Cal to Fuente Caliente. And, um, and then we start running, but I'm not taking you with me this time. I am running as hard as I can and no camera. And then here's all my stuff. There's my wife in that dressing room. Um, oh, you can't really see it, can you? <coughs> anyway, phone. I've got my poles. I've got my head torch in there. I've got baby food to eat. Um, I've got a space blanket. I've got nutrition. I've got some coke and water. Um, what else have I got? I've got paracetamol in there, um, coke in that bottle, water in that bottle, baby food, poles, that is pretty much it. Plasters, in case I need to put any of my toes. Um, and in here, in this plastic bag here, I've got some um, Vaseline and some porridge. I'm going to eat the porridge and put the Vaseline on my skin, not the other way around. That's it, and I'm off. So, um, have a great day, everyone, because I know I will. This is the start line of the Transvolcania Ultra down at Fuencaliente by the lighthouse. Uh, they really know how to build the atmosphere. Look at those lights shining, the music pumping. And as the camera turns around, you will see nervous faces. There's 2,000 people down there waiting to start the race at 6 a.m. We've been standing there for an hour waiting for the start, so they really know how to pump it up. Que va a ir muy rápido, que esa es su estrategia. Some advice for the people who is running for the first time. Take it easy on that first climb, that first out of the pillar, or I mean up to the first aid station. That's, that's my advice. Muy bien, gracias. Thank you. Consejo para todos los principiantes. Dice que vayan despacito, que se lo tomen con calma.
sobre todo de aquí al primer habitual ya tiene los primeros 7 durísimos kilómetros en su vida. One of the greatest sights in ultra running is the procession of lights from the Transvolcania Ultra Start as you climb up the volcano. I've used my phone here so it doesn't look that amazing, but you get the idea. And this is three times winner of the Ultra, Luis Alberto Hernando, passing us in the marathon, although my phone froze, didn't it? No filming this year, so here's a few photos of the race. Climbing up to Roque de la Machachos and coming down Tazacorte there, passing through the marathon finish here, and this is the Ravine of Sorrows here. Although I didn't take the camera on the run itself, I did give it to Victoria to hold at the end. So this is Los Llanos, about 200 metres before the finish line, and uh, Richard is just passing. He finished in 12 hours, 19 minutes, 44 seconds, just a few minutes quicker than he did in 2016. because I wanted to stop but everyone's cheering me. So you can't. Ugh. That chap looking back anxiously there is Tony, who I met at the Purbeck Marathon in 2016. Uh, I'm about five minutes behind him. Oh, this is Stephen. Stephen's coming. He's coming. I think so. It looks like him. Yeah, this is him with the poles. Just coming to the finish, been very, very hard. This is my friend Marco. With about two kilometers to go, I had severe cramp in my legs and I crouched to the floor and I was really in pain. And Marco came up behind me and he said, use your poles, get your poles out. Cause we were on the flat by now. Uh, so I got my poles out, I stood up and the poles helped and the cramps slowly started to fade. Um, so I ran in with Marco. In the days afterwards, uh, we noticed when videos started appearing on YouTube that uh, the TV coverage had, uh, had caught me and Marco crossing the line. Uh, so here's me making a bit of a fool of myself on TV. Good job. <laughs> it's hard work. 12.30. Okay. 12 hours, 30 minutes. I beat last year by one hour and 10 minutes. Come on. Thank you. You went up that hill like buggery, mate. Well done. Well done. I was dreading that hill, and it, uh, it hurt. I couldn't believe how much it hurt. I've mean, done it in training, and it, I found it really easy. And then, and then at the end of 70 odd miles, 70 odd K. Yeah. 
My wife gave it to me on the corner. Hello. Finish his t-shirt. This is what Transvolcania does to people. Well done. So this is awesome. This is by a company called Relive and what they do is they take your Strava activity and create a little um, map of your run, a video map of your run. It'll include any pictures that you might have taken en route as well. So here's the uh, Transvolcania Ultra passing Teneguia Volcano and San Antonio Volcano through the village of Los Canarios and we keep going up on the first climb round more volcanoes through the forests and up to the top which is at 16 kilometers 10 miles to the second aid station which is Las Desedas. Then we head down all the way to El Pilar which is the third aid station and then we start climbing back up again. We've hit the clouds once, we've gone back down and now we're climbing up again through the clouds um, to another aid station called Pico de la Nieve. It's really starting to hurt now and you've got your poles out and it's slow going but the views are absolutely stunning. Drop down for one more aid station and then back up again and this is the final climb, another couple of aid stations along here before we reach the highest point in Transvolcania Ultra and that is at 2,300 metres, something like that, I think it says in a minute, 2,327 metres before we start the long 17, 18, 19 kilometre descent. It doesn't look steep here, but believe me, it's a really steep descent. All the way down, passing the um, El Team aid station, which is the second last aid station. And then you come to the tiny little switchbacks there, you can see onto the beach at Tazacorte, along the Ravine of Sorrows, climb up, and into the town of Los Llanos to the finish and there's me with my medal at the end. I think that's awesome, awesome little video. Um, so go to relive.cc and sign up if you want your runs to look like that. Two days after the uh, Transvolcania Ultra, this is all that remains of the marathon finish line. And. Uh, this is the very famous, this is the very famous switchbacks that you come down at the end of the marathon and with about 4k to go in the, uh, in the ultra and you just basically come down the side of this mountain here. This is at the end of a huge 20k drop. You can't, you can't even see the, the path really, you need somebody up there to, to see where the path is that you come down and looking at it again from here you kind of can't believe the, that you've done it really it's not it doesn't it doesn't feel as steep when you're actually doing it than when you look back and see what you've just done so yeah the marathon finishes here and then the ultra carries on and you, you go down those steps over there onto the beach and then under an underpass and along a dry riverbed all the way along here and then up a final big climb to the village of Los Llanos which is up there in the distance which is about, it's about a 4k run from here a 4k crawl if you're a 
your suffering. Okay. Here we are on the switchbacks going up. We're going up this time. If you're doing the ultra or the marathon, you come down these switchbacks. And there below, I'll just move the camera. There's the village of Tazacorte below and the marina beyond. And um, this line here is the ravine of sorrows that you have to run along if you do the ultra and then up into Las Lanos over in the distance there. So this is the track that you run on. This, this here, this bit is, is very nice, but obviously it's, it's pretty rocky, pretty treacherous. If you're running it, you have to be pretty careful when you're coming down. I passed somebody a couple of days ago, sat on the rocks here who badly sprained his ankle less than a kilometre from the end of the marathon. So as you can see, you need to be careful. Right, I need some sunglasses. Okay, we'll get back to the running stuff in a minute, but it is a holiday. You've got to have some pool activity, haven't you? This is the Teneguia Princess Hotel. It's probably one of the hotels that you're likely to stay at if you come and do the Transvolcania Ultra in La Palma. This hotel has 11 swimming pools, although only one of them is heated, and that's the one that everyone goes to, of course, unless it's really, really hot. Um, the Teneguia Princess is literally 10 minutes away from the start of the uh, Ultra and the Half Marathon, 10 minutes away. If you're running the marathon then you do have a little bit further to go but buses are provided so wherever you are on the island you'll pretty much be able to find a bus, a free bus, to take you to the start line of whatever race you're doing. I look like a fell runner. You can't run. You can't run. Now that, now that I know it, I love the fact that we can see Tassa Corte from here. I love the fact that if you just look over there, you can see the end of the race. Well, kind of the end of the race. I got a load of photos when I was down there earlier. It's the whole descent. It is amazing. <laughs> didn't really notice that. No. I didn't know what we are looking at. No, no. Yeah, so last year when we came here, we, we didn't really know anything about the race, really. But now that we're kind of a bit wiser, we know fine well that this this hill here is kind of the start of the race that's the early part of the race going up to the top there and then right over in the distance you won't be able to see it on the camera but right over in the distance there we can see the final descent of the race and we didn't we didn't know that last year I just caught my own toe now This is a pretty inauspicious bit of dirt ground, really. Um, that is Fuencaliente Lighthouse. And this patch of land here is the start line of the Transvolcania Ultra. It really doesn't look like you could fit 2,000 people on here, to be honest. Um, but from about this, where I'm standing now, where I'm standing here, is just about the start line. And everyone squashes in behind there, up to those toilets at the back there. There's a huge screen up here on the wall, um, counting down the minutes to the start of the race. You get down here an hour before the race. Before that, um, pre five o'clock in the morning, you are held up there where the lighthouse is. And then at five o'clock, you filter down the road here through the check-in point across a mat to check that you're here. And then round 
to the start line. If you have a number one, you're an elite and you start at the front. If you have a number two on your bib, you start kind of in the middle. And if you have a number three on your bib, you start towards the back. And it'll take you about 10 minutes to filter to the start. for the toilets, four toilets for 2,000 people and then as I said at five o'clock you go down the slope to the start line and then I don't know if you can see but there's the path we follow and basically we go all the way up the side and as far as you can see in the distance we go up there. The first volcano you can see is Teneguia and the second volcano further back is San Antonio, the bigger volcano. We're on the GR131, which is the main route of uh, the Transvolcani Ultra. And this path is also part of the half marathon route. So we're just climbing up from Los Canarias. We would do this at around 7, 7.30 in the morning. Race starts at 6. So up this path here and following it, keep going up. So when people talk about Transvolcania being one of the toughest ultra races in, in Europe, in the world, what they're talking about is, is terrain like this. See, you've got this kind of sharp volcanic sand, gets in your shoes, cuts you. You've got volcanic rocks like this that are loose, but you've also got big jagged rocks like that and you've got to run up and down this for the entire race pretty much. Um, it isn't easy as you can see and this this section here that we're in now this is literally only 10k into the race so you've still got another 64 65 kilometers to run after climbing up this. Running through the forests here, it does make for an absolutely beautiful run. If you are doing the Transvolcania Ultra, you will likely stay at uh, one or two hotels. The H10, or this place, the Teneguia Princess. And uh, here we are in the dining room. Food's not too bad, really. The holiday we booked through Thompson and First Choice 
in the UK uh, was an all-inclusive deal. So um, we would go to this restaurant for breakfast and for dinner in the evening. During the week, the restaurant has a variety of different foods served. So one night they might have a Mexican night or then they might have an Italian night or a, a traditional La Palma night. At lunchtime, however, we go to the pizza restaurant by the pools. That allowed us to just stay by the pools all day, really. Um, and the pizza restaurant does pizzas, as you'd expect. Burgers, chips, salad, coffee, tea, lemonade, coke, orange juice. So it was perfectly adequate for lunch and we really enjoyed being able to stay by the pools. Everybody's favourite, the desserts. Of course, if you're running an ultra marathon, you're not interested in that, are you? No, of course you're not. So that is it. Transville Kenya is over for 2017. We are in the airport. We're going to get our plane home. Victoria? Has it convinced you to do the marathon next year? No. Two years. Half marathon next year. I think there's a little bit of convincing to do, but I think she's, ne she's nearly there, okay? So Victoria for Transvolcania in a year or two years. Hello. You may know Zoe. Zoe did the marathon here at Transvolcania this year. Ultra next year? Yes. No, not yet next year. How did you, what did you think about this year? I loved it actually. Would you Listen, recommend it? I would recommend it, yeah. You've got to do lots of training for the hills though. <laughs> Up and down. Yeah. Will Will your partner in crime tell a different story? Um, Liam may do. I don't think he enjoyed it quite as much as I did. <laughs> I only did the marathon, but I did enjoy the first yeah. 10k yeah. and the last 10k. Everything above the clouds is a bit painful for me, but that's partly because I didn't do enough training. Spoken like a true gent. <laughs> and last but not least, Richard, with no training, beat me again. I had an injury, but I don't know. Maybe it's just easier than it it's made out to be. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's just 10 years younger than I am. Next year? Two years? What do we think? Um, next year? Okay, time prediction for either next year or the year after. What are we going to do? Definitely under 12. We said that last year then. Yeah, but it's still completely doable. About stopping the age state injuries is quite hard, isn't it? And just training for it. Without injuries, without stopping at aid stations and training properly, Richard and I will complete Transvolcania 18 or 19 in under 12 hours, we promise you. Honestly, come back in 12 months. If we haven't done it, you can unsubscribe from the YouTube channel, I promise, all right? That's my, that's my deal to you. <laughs>